Hello and welcome to all the hunting enthusiasts out there. You are watching the first ever episode of Africa 5. Our first guest today has hunted Africa extensively. He spends most of his, his life in the most wild places in Africa. It's no secret that he's one of my favorite. Um, he is Peter Wood. Peter, welcome to Africa 5. Thank you, Andy. Good to, good to be here. Thank you for having me. COVID times. How you been dealing with this? Yeah, we've been struggling. Um, yeah, it's, it's just very sad to, to have all these hunters so, so excited to, to come out. You know, some of these guys have booked their trips years in advance and then all of a sudden the door gets closed. So, yeah, we're struggling. Um, I think the worst part about it is the wildlife. Um, nobody's out there to protect them. Um, thankfully, we've had a lot of funding and a lot of... Um, finance come in to to operators to help out with that but uh yeah, it's been tough you know somebody who loves the bush like like i do to be stuck in a shoebox it's um you know it's like a bit of an animal in a cage no for sure how you been keeping yourself busy pete well we thought we might play a bit of golf but <laughs> even the courses have been shut down so yeah just trying to Keep uh, keep clients calm, you know. Trying to discuss, you know, what the future plans are. Talking about the future, that kind of thing. Uh, trying not to annoy my wife too much. Um, I think I've gone way beyond that already. But uh, yeah, the, but the golf courses are open again, so all's good. Ah, super, super. Yeah, it's been it's been quite incredible how everyone. I've heard a lot of stories of of clients donating monies to the relevant outfitters that they use, and I think. Uh, you know, now more than ever, it's showing that hunters really do care about wildlife. Oh, big time, big time. You know, um, everyone's been hit financially. It's not just us. It's not just the hunting industry. It's the whole planet has been hurt. And to have guys that are willing and able, sometimes not that able, to put in money like this, um, yeah, it gives you goosebumps. It, it really does. And uh, a big shout out to every single one of those guys. Pete, you say you play golf. I also play a bit of golf. What a handicap are you working off there? <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it, Andy, but uh, at the moment I'm on a five. So we're trying to get it, get that figured out. Uh, I think we'll have enough practice. Maybe we'll get a bit better. Uh, good. I won't tell you what my handicap is. Um, after uh, I've seen you play. you you got plenty of talent. <laughs> Just needs refining. Um, Pete, you did your training under Roger Whittle. He's one of the all-time famous guys. He's, I think, yeah, he, tell me a bit about who he's trained and and how many guys he's put through the system. Oh, I'd have to. I'd, I'd it, we'd be here for a couple of days if I had to name some of the big, big names in the industry right now that are where they are because of him. Um, very, very hard man, but very fair. Uh, throws you in the deep end and. You, you get stuck in, and that's the best way to learn. Um, he's so highly respected, and uh, it was just a, it was an honor to to grow up in the industry. You know, when I when I decided that, you know, if you can make your passion your career, to be able to do that and move forward under a man like that, no, you know, nothing else be said. No, for sure. Um, I spoke to him not too long ago, and he had a few a few nice words for you. Wood, Wood's a very very good hunter. I mean, I'm, I'm pleased that he's been he's stuck with us all that time. <laughs> <laughs> Old Roger, yeah, yeah, he's just um, he's a true legend, a true legend in the industry. And uh, I tell you, probably my biggest inspiration in uh, coming through, learning, and. Uh, you know how you know how we always say in Zimmer, you always make a plan. You know, if something's not working, you make a plan. And um, yeah, I just I would just say any chance to pop in and go and say hi to Roger and sit there and enjoy some one-on-one -on -one time with him. You feel the same way, oh. all of us, all of us. Just all, he's just got an aura about him. You just want to be around him and and learn more every time you see him. You'll learn something else. So yeah, he is a legend. Yeah, what a what a what a great man, and and what he's done for wildlife, just incredible. He's such an inspiration. He's never stopped. He's never stopped. If he's not introducing game, he's protecting game. I mean, this whole COVID nineteen shutdown. Do you think that man's sat at his house locked up? He's been in the bush every day, fighting, protecting. 
making sure the animals have got water. You know, he, he never stops. He'll never stop. Pete, you've done a lot of hunting. Um, where do you do your hunting these days? Andy, I've been very blessed. Um, you know, not only working with Roger Whittle and hunting throughout Zimbabwe, Mozambique. Uh, I actually did my first year in Zambia under him many, many moons ago. Um, but now with with Dave Radamay and Northern Operations Africa, we I've been uh, my eyes have been opened. Uh, hunting northern Cameroon in the savannah, southern Cameroon in the rainforest, Uganda, Ethiopia, um, Chad is another place that we hunt. So I mean, I would I would say just very blessed to be able to learn all the new areas, all the new cultures. I mean, Ethiopia, we went there together. Look at all the cultures and all the different people that we met. Didn't we have a wild time? I mean, how awesome was that? Oh, it's, I just can't wait to go back. I'm going back in next year. Well, we were in the mountains together, which is just stunning. Um, we were right on top of the, we were on the roof of Africa with the mountain Yala. And then we went into the thick, thick, heavy mountains for the giant forest hog. And then from there, you drive a day, day and a half, and you're in the Danical Depression. I think it's one of the lowest places on the planet. And you're in the desert now. Um, you know, where you hunt the Sommerings gazelle and the Biza oryx and all those other species. You won't think you're in the same country. And then you go into um, the the uh, Abyssinian Kudu, and now you're in a crater. You think you, you've you dropped into the Grand Canyon now. It's just, it's just incredible. And everywhere you go, the communities are slightly different. They've all got their little way of doing things, but they're so friendly. I mean, you remember... We stop off in those little towns and have some tibs. Remember the tibs? Oh, man, that was delicious. And how awesome were the people? They're just so accommodating, just so friendly. And the whole country's like it. The whole country's like it. You just have a blast. I know it's hard to, to put a finger on you hunt so many places. Where's your favorite place? Is it the rainforest? Is it uh, Ethiopia? Is it Zimbabwe? Is it Mozambique? Yeah. That's a tough question, Andy, um, because of the, the variety. Um, I'd say Humani is always going to hold a very special place in my heart. Um, it's just so beautiful. It is just, in terms of terrain and, and, and that, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever ever been to. The rainforest does hold something special for me too, though. It's, it's, it's high adrenaline. Um, everything's very, very close quarters. And you work very hard for each animal. It's, it's you know, it's not a cakewalk. So I think... You know, the rainforest, I love it because of how hard you work. You know, a lot of people can come out and the story is the trophy on the wall. You know, we hunt with the guy and then he gets his trophies and everything. But for the rest of his life, he's going to look at that thing on the wall and remember what happened. And I think the rainforest helps to make a very big story about how things went down because it's not easy in there. For sure, I'll I'll testament to that. Uh, <laughs> Fourteen days in the rainforest is like I'm like, ooh, I'm nearly done now. Yeah. yeah, everything's biting you and chasing you, and yeah. Tell us a story about uh, about a certain animal that you hunted, and 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 just just to give us the essence of why the rainforest <laughs> is what it is. Um, look, when you're in the rainforest, you don't see a lot of game because it's so thick. You see a lot of gorillas, you see the odd chimpanzee and things like that, but when you step off the road, um, I catch myself a lot. You just stop and you just stand there and you're like, wow, it's dark in there. It's a whole different planet. You know, when they say the dark continent, the rainforest is the dark continent. You know, you almost need lights on your on your video camera. I mean, you've tried to get, get footage in there. It's not, not easy. Um, we've had some pretty intense, in, in, intense experiences, you know, where... You know, some of the, I'd say probably the, one of the closest animals I shot was a forest buffalo at about two paces on a full charge. And we hadn't even shot him yet. We are hunting buffalo, and here he comes. So, but it, it, it's not that one off. That happens a lot. You know, so you've got to go in there. You've got to be focused. You know, you, there's vines trying to trip you up. There's those flipping fire ants 
crawling up your pants trying to kill you and but you know when the time comes when you're into that that zone now you know a lot of animals have that safety zone in the forest you when you catch him you're already inside his safety zone so that makes a lot of sense yeah you know you're already on top of him he's already not happy with you there so that's yeah, exciting yeah. what weapon do you carry in the rainforest because i know you as a zimbabwean i don't think you can take your rifle there can you we can but i just the forest is quite brutal on on equipment you don't take your second wife I there. i don't take my second wife there no 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 um we have we have large caliber we've got 375s and 458 lots um so we, we have rifles out there but yeah that that rain, rainforest is quite brutal on equipment it's like your camera I can you know it's if it's not raining it's dusty that fine powder dust on the roads i mean it's it's not for the faint of heart what what do you wear in the rainforest when you go i mean you, there's none of this guys like wow the wears wears his little his little sandals and <laughs> shorts and no yeah, sleeves yeah. but it's brave <laughs> <laughs> he's a lot tougher than i am eh? um and the and the pygmies too i mean they run around in there in flip flops those guys are pretty crazy no i don't um i wear a t-shirt like i'm wearing now and uh, just long cotton pants and uh you know we we tuck our socks into our our trousers into our socks so we look like a goofy 1960s golfer and and, and trainers uh, you want to be slick in there you don't want to have a lot of stuff hanging off you because you're going to end up swinging in the in the vine <laughs> yes so you want to be streamlined and uh, you want to have a camel back with some water in there because you sweat it's humid i mean if it's not raining it's it's 96% humidity no i remember that you get 15 yards into that rainforest and you're drenched in sweat yeah yeah you feel like you've been in the shower but yeah you just want to be streamlined you don't want to have all your fancy knives hanging off your belt and all this you don't need binos i mean you don't need binos to look 3 or 4 yards so no you just want to be slicker Tell me how's the elephant hunting there? I I haven't done an elephant hunt in the forest. Um but I can imagine it must be hairy. Uh, it's it's pretty intense. Um Andy it's it's pretty close. Uh it's also again it's bloody dangerous because when you see him you're inside his comfort zone. So it's a 50-50. He's either going to run or he's going to r- try and run you over. Um you can't you can't like in other parts like in let's say in Zimbabwe for instance you following a bull he walks in amongst a herd of cows you keep going on him you can't do that in the rainforest once there's more than one elephant track in front of you you got to step out you know you don't want to now have to start shooting a female in self defense because when that animal's running through the forest you all you see is moving bushes so you want to be sure that it's the one that you're following um so it's difficult there's a lot of disappointment but the rewards are as high as any animal you'll ever hunt when you finally catch that that lone bull pit uh the company that you hunt for at the moment northern operations has become a leading name in the safari industry uh why do you put that down to pit i put it down to um just a, a great team uh with an exceptional leader dave radamaya is an exceptional leader very driven man um and then of course our anchor is maria she she's just so organized she pretty much covers from the time that client leaves his house till he gets back home till his trophies are in his house um so you know dave only expects the best from us um always tries to find the very best of the areas so that we can make sure that the hunters that come out have the greatest memories and uh, i think the team as well you know don't take away from terry labat and jacques maya and uh, we have a new youngster on the team now who's got yeah. he's got a lot Michael of potential deploy. Michael deploy is doing very very well yeah um yeah i rate him yeah i rate him very well he's you know he just started our little youngster and we like no we just sit back and watch this and he's produced the goods so and uh, of course you know cliff walker is part of part of that So I I think it's we just make a good team because everyone knows you know only the best will do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope to work a lot more with you guys in the future. Yeah, uh, you're always welcome. It's just uh the variety and the versatility of of wildlife, of terrain, of 
cultures of people, um, the skills, the different skills of different trackers. You know, you go to the rainforest, these guys track like this, and it'll blow your mind. Then you go to the savannah, and everyone's totally different. Um, so, it, yeah, I, I'm just very, very happy to be part of the, the team. Pete, I know, obviously, being in the hunting industry myself, uh, you guys spend so much time in the bush as professional hunters. Some of your closest friends in your life are your trackers. Please talk me through your, your, your Zim trackers as a start, since you've been there with them for so many years. Yes. Um, I can't talk about them without starting with Magara. And you knew Magara. I never met Magara, but I've I've heard the stories. Absolute legend. And I think probably in the field, one of my biggest teachers. Um, everywhere you go, any, any tracker you, you ever meet, who ever met him, has just the greatest respect for him. Give me Magara in a nutshell. Magara in a nutshell was an elephant guru. Uh, he was He was the finest elephant hunter, I think, of the modern era and even going back some. Um, but saying that, once the elephant was over, I mean, you, you, Magara, we need to go look for a kudu. <laughs> what for? You behind the elephant. <laughs> Let's go shoot another elephant, you know. But um, he was so focused. When he, when it was time to hunt elephant, he, he won't talk to you. He, he's focused. He, he thinks like an elephant. And, and I think that's where a lot of people... Um, who had the, the chance to hunt with him, got to learn about how to hunt, think like the animal. And, the, and that's what Magara was. Magara became an elephant. I'm sad I didn't get to meet him because the stories of that, are, I mean, what a real absolute African legend. Um, but getting on to Rendai and Shorty, yeah, your two right-hand men to this day, um, tell, us, tell us a bit about those, those guys. What, are they, what do they specialize in and... Uh, Shorty specializes in uh, laughter and humor and pranks and he's been with me over 20 years now um, getting on a bit I mean he's almost 70 and he looks 30 can you believe it that little act is almost 70 are you joking he was uh, Shorty grew up as a cattle boy which most trackers were I mean uh, Magara was pulled out of a classroom at the age of like 8 by Roger's father and said you're going to come and become a tracker and him and Roger grew up together. And uh, Shorty was the same thing. Pulled out of school. But he was pulled out of school to become a cattle boy. And he had a big herd of cattle that he was in charge of. And he loves his cattle. And they're on Shorty's pan. Short, you know Shorty's pan on your money? That's, that was where he was based. And today it's still called Shorty's. There was a leopard that was killing the calves. And... So he, you know, he goes to Roger and he says, boss, you know, we've got the problem. And, you know, Roger was busy and obviously not too interested in what's going on here. I've got other things to do. Shorty, fix it. Sort it out. Don't come to me with problems. So not to be outdone, Shorty made himself a little boma, okay, out of logs, you know, just up, upright poles like this. And he took a calf out of the herd and stuck it inside the boma and he went inside there with it. And he'd just crank its tail every now and then and make it bleed. So, <laughs> like Jim Corbett, you know, using yourself as bait. And it wasn't right, right off the bat. Um, I forget how long it took, a couple of days, whatever. But eventually, in this bomber, he'd made a little tunnel now for this cat to come in and try and grab this calf. And uh, eventually, Shorty heard a little rustling of the leaves, and here came Mr. Spots. Whereupon Shorty axed him. Killed him with an axe. Can you believe it? Here we use all these high-powered rifles and Shorty does it with an axe. <laughs> Skins it out nicely, dries the skin, folds it up nicely and hands it back to the boss and said, there's your problem. And uh, from what I heard, it wasn't a small leopard either. Wow. Yeah, incredible, incredible little guy. And he's still with me. And then my other guy, Rindai, also a comic. Also, all a big prankster, um, which I think is important on a, on a hunting track. You've got to have a lot of fun. You know, you've traveled half the, well, the way around the world. You're trying to hunt a buffalo, which you've dreamt about since you were knee-high to a grasshopper. Why not have fun when you're doing it? And I think those two guys um, are very, very important 
in, in making sure that that happens, which they do. Um, but not to take away from Rindai's skills. He's phenomenal. Uh, you know, a lot of people use two trackers when they're in the field. I mean, I'm biased, but yeah, I, I, Rindai one up, I don't need anyone else. He's that good. We did a very good hunt together um, in terms of success and just everything kind of came together. Um, you know the one I'm talking about. With Mark and the family. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Special. Uh, what has been your most successful safari? Can you can you put the, a finger on that? Andy, I'd have to say that one would be right at the top. Eh? Um, Me too. It, it's just the way everything fell into place. And I mean, the end of the safari, when you stood back and looked at what what we'd managed to accomplish with the girls hunting, you know, not only the, the two main, the main men getting the big, big four and shooting exceptional quality at that, but look at all the girls came out and shoot beautiful trophies. Um, it was an incredible hunt that I, that's probably, I'd say number one. Yeah. Sweet. Mine too. Yeah. We had a ball there. Ah, oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, and the lion was like, just before we were about to take off on the airplane, <laughs> we eventually found the wounded lion yeah. and it was a bit of a showdown. And I was involved with the weapon as well. I yeah. learned a lot on that yeah, hunt. Yeah. You're not only good with a camera, you made a pretty good shot there. Yeah, you use a pretty special double rifle. Tell us the story about that. Yeah. Um, so we've, we hunted 20 years together and, a few years ago, he surprised me by giving me a double rifle that he had bought on my recommendation like the second time we'd ever hunted together, and he actually gave it to me, which blew me away. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an old English double. She's almost 100 now. Still works like, like a bank vault. Um, it's a 475 number two made by Watson Brothers. Absolutely, it's it's a piece of art, you know, um, very elegant rifle. But as you've got testament, she's saved quite a bit of bacon. So, no, no, I've 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 seen her in action, and I've <laughs> I've seen you handle it as well. It's something to behold. Um, what bullets do you prefer shooting, Pete? There must be a couple different ones, but uh, what are they? Andy, I'd say the to me the, the probably the best expanding bullets or swift a-frame um over the years i've never seen one fail i've they always come out the way they do they look in the photographs you know on the advertising and stuff like that um there are other there is a lot of other good ammo there's you know barnes um hornady but i've always just maintained a high respect for that swift a-frame um and then in the solids you know, there's there's so much good ammo this, these days. Um, I like the Woodley. I shoot that in my double. Um, Hornady's make some really good ammunition as well. Um, so I, I, yeah, I'd probably say the Swift A frame and then and then a Woodley solid. Um, but there's a lot of it out there. There's a lot of it out there. And uh, you know what the other saying goes: It doesn't matter how good your ammo or how big your gun is if you don't put it in the right place. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Yeah. Pete, before we end, um, I would like to ask you one more question. This is from your friend, uh, Terry Labatt. Like oh, so this is a loaded question. Now. I'd like you to answer this question with all honesty. I don't, I don't honesty. know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been woken up in a blind by your client? Mm, I have to say yes. I have to admit yes, I have to. Um, I do have a tendency to rumble a little bit when I when I fall asleep, you know. I think that's purely because I've got a clear conscience, got nothing to worry about. So I do rumble a little if I doze off. Um, but uh, yeah, I've I've had I've had an elbow in the ribs once or twice. Any any that come to mind that you could tell us a little bit about the story and how it, how it happened? What were you waiting for? What were you? Oh no, I, I remember waiting for a a leopard once and. Uh, it was it was kind of early and I thought, well, I'll just have myself a little bit of a snooze here, you know. The client's so excited. He, I can see the whites of his eyes, you know, in the pitch darkness. I thought, well, he'll be fine. I'll just have a little doze here. He'll cover for you. Yeah, he'll cover for me. <laughs> Only to catch a bit of a... Hey, psst. What? You're snoring. Oh, sorry, sorry. And the leopard's here. 
<laughs> so, but it worked out. Maybe I attracted him, you know. He thought there was another bull in his territory here, and he came to check us out. So, yeah, uh, thanks, Terry. I remember that one. Uh, brilliant. Central African Republic, you hunted there for a couple of years. Pete, how, how is it there? I, I haven't had the, the, the privilege of hunting there. It's all war-torn at the moment. I've been trying to get in the last couple of years, but no one seems to think it's a good idea. What What's it like there, Pete? And... Uh, What's the situation at the moment? Yes, unfortunately, Central Africa right now is a little bit of a hot spot in terms of security for your for your hunters. Um, you know, we can't guarantee their safety. Um, there's a bit of strife going on between the locals. But in terms of hunting, Andy, you've got to get there. It is spectacular. You know, you can hunt on one safari. You can do the giant forest hog, the Lord Derby Elan the bonga and the yellowback diker on one safari, as well as 15 or 16 other species. Um, truly spectacular. And again, very, very hard hunting. Um, you know, high, high rewards. Every animal you, you get, you really work for. And it was huge. It was massive, massive area. It was, it was like 5 million acres. I mean, bigger than Wanky National Park. Can you imagine? So it was special. Logistically a nightmare. The operator there, you know, bent over backwards to do, to get out food, ketchup, salt and pepper to put on the table. Had to be imported from Europe. You know, so it was, it was hard. It was a hard, hard place to, to operate. But the hunting is, I should have put that on, on my list as one of my favorite places. I can't wait to go back. Yeah, me too. Maybe we'll go together. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, because Christian, who we hunted with in Ethiopia, he is dying to get there because he's got he's got the dwarf um, the dwarf forest buffalo. He's got the western savanna buffalo. He's got the Cape buffalo. He's going to be getting the buffalo in Ethiopia, which eastern is savanna. The eastern savanna. So he needs the central African savanna. That's right. And then it'll have his all five African buffalo. Buffalo slam. Buffalo slam, and that's a pretty pretty cool slam yeah yeah buffalo uh, you get the buffalo slam you know you've done some hard work that's for damn sure yeah and 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 the, the thing is christian says i don't care i don't care how unsafe it is let's go <laughs> let's go sign me up <laughs> i'm yeah. ready yeah. we'll go I don't do it. have to answer to his wife okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you tell my wife as well eh? Uh, yeah. i'm not telling you i'll just tell her i'm going on a, on a holiday you can <laughs> tell her where we're going uh awesome well, Pete, thank you so much for talking to us on Africa 5. Um, thank you, bud. Awesome stories. and I'm sure you've got a lot more, but uh, time is of the essence. Maybe we'll have to have you back one day. Folks, thanks for joining us on Africa 5. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. We will be doing a couple more in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>